Hello, my name is Chris Boyer. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Ag and Resource Economics here at the University of Tennessee. Um, and today I'm going to um, visit with you. The title of my presentation is, is Farm Management Considerations um, for Row Crop Producers. Now that's a very broad um, title topic and, and what I want to spend our time with talking to you with is or talking to you about is um, using cost of production in in making those decisions. So um, how do I, uh, the three questions we wanna, I wanna try to address and, and, and look, look at is, one, how do I use um, my cost of production in, in my mid-production mid year to, to make um, wise decisions um, for the rest of that year? How do I use that, that cost of production information to uh, figure out where I need to maybe focus on um, looking for different or lower cost inputs in the future um, for, the, or for the next year's uh, production year. Um, and then also how do I use my cost of production in making wise marketing decisions for this year. Um, so typically what we um, uh, see or encourage producers to do uh, and, and what you probably do is you have a, a given field and within that given field every year, you decide, well, I, I may plant corn, I may plant soybeans, I may plant cotton. Um, and so you can, December, January, uh, February timeframe, start thinking, okay, these would be my cost productions for corn, my cost productions for soybean, um, or cost production for cotton. And how do I, um, you know, or what yields I may get on that field for each one of those commodities, and then figure out what my break-even price may be. Um, or, and, and that way you can make a wise decision on how do I allocate that um, land to a certain crop that's going to maximize my profit. Now, you may be um, also be in a crop rotation that that field um, may need to be in soybeans that year or may need to be in corn that year. And, it's, it's still helpful to, to calculate that, that cost production on before planting so you can figure out, okay, what my break-even price might be and then what the future harvest price is looking like. And it can help you make wise management decisions of trying to figure out how to, how to control your costs during that production year. So to answer the three questions or to look at our three questions that I, I mentioned, um, earlier the, them being um, how do I use my cost reduction um, mid-season and making um, a, a management decision um, how do I use it for making future management decisions and how do I use it for making wise marketing decisions we're going to look at two um, examples or case studies um, so the first one um, will be a corn um, case study and so you, you may see a, a slide pop up here that's got a pie chart that sh breaks down um, cost production for corn, and, and this is a um, just a cost uh, we pull from the UT budgets. Again, this is just a case study. Um, your farm may be, um, well, is likely different um, in a lot of areas, but uh, if you look at the kind of the pie chart of where your costs are currently um, and what future costs you may have, you may, that may include uh, hauling your grain, storing it, um, things like that. Uh, you can see, okay, what my current costs are, what I expect to spend on, on drying, storing, um, hauling, to get a, a really strong estimate of what my total cost production is. So is this, in this example, um, got to use my notes there because there's a lot of numbers, it's, it's $638 an acre is my um, estimated cost of production. So if you, if you look at the next slide, we'll show um, these break-even prices. So if you take your total cost and you divide it by um, your total output, so um, I, I made kind of a worst case, average case or expected case and best case scenarios of different yields and you divide that total cost divided by that yield. So for example in the, the average case if you divided the $638 an acre um, divided by the 170 bushels an acre which is your sort of average yield expected um, for that year uh, you'd have a break-even price of, of $3.75 a bushel. Um, so, so now you know, okay, 
upcoming, I need to sell my, my corn for $3.75 a bushel to break even to make no profit. So I need to sell it above that to make a, 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 a profit for growing this crop. Um, so if we look at this um, example here and we, and we think about our pie chart again, um, the inputs of land, seed, fertilizer, um, and uh, machinery make up about 70% of our uh, production costs. So using this, this estimate right now and looking at um, production into next year, we can answer that question, maybe I need to look at ways of lowering my machinery costs or different um, sources for buying fertilizer or um, seed to lower my seed and fertilizer costs. Land cost is something that you may not have much control over um, based on negotiated leases, but these are, the, the machinery cost may be something you say, well, do I replace my planter or do I not replace my planter? Um, what would that do to my machinery costs uh, and then result in, a, in a, my break-even costs? Um, and then uh, currently, you know, you, you can use this number to decide, okay, should I store or not store? Um, storage cost is going gonna, is gonna to add additional cost which is gonna drive up that break-even cost. So those are ways you can use that information today in making those storage decisions, um, other input decisions, and also in um, your uh, looking at next year and lowering your cost production for next year. Now the, the next slide is a similar pie chart for um, soybeans. And um, if we look at our pie chart where we break up the case study of soybeans, and again, this is um, an example that's kind of pulled from the UT uh, extension crop budgets. Um, our total cost production was about $486 an acre. Um, now, if we look at our pie chart here, we can see that, that land, seed, chemical, and machinery are making up about 67% of our input costs. So then again, we can look at this number today and say maybe in future years, I really need to look at ways of lowering my machinery costs, um, figuring out ways to lower my chemical costs, uh, and in doing that, you're going to result in lower total cost production and lowering that break-even price. So again, uh, the next slide will show some break-even prices for soybeans, um, and similarly, I did a, a worst average and best case scenario, and, and these are helpful for some sort of sensitivity analysis, right? So you haven't har yet harvested yet. Um, there's still some unknowns out there in production, but you may at this point have a good ballpark of saying, this is the worst case scenario yield I'm expecting, what I sort of expect or average, and then best case scenario, if everything goes right, this is what I could get. So using our sensitivity analysis and dividing our total cost of production um, by our yields, let's for our best case scenario, we can see that um, we need about $8.68 a bushel to break even. Now, again, let me reiterate, this is just a example case study that I came up with. Your numbers could be um, slightly different or completely different, um, depending on your specific operation uh, and situation. But we know that now that, okay, I may have some, some other input decisions, specifically, uh, applying, applying a, a fungicide. So several years ago, uh, there was some research here that we did at UT where we looked at applying fungicide to control frog eye leaf spot in um, soybeans. And we found that on average, it was between about seven to, to five bushels an acre is what um, spraying could increase your yields. Um, so if we think about that, this in season decision, right now I could make a decision to spend more money to spray to control fungicide if it's if it's bad, but I would expect maybe an additional seven bushels an acre. And so assuming soybean prices are nine dollars a bushel, roughly um, seven more bushels an acre, that means you could increase your revenue by sixty-three dollars um, an acre by making this one application. Now, if you can do it for less than the cost, if if the cost is less than the return, um, so if you can spray for less than the, the, our example here of $63 an acre of our expected returns, it would be a profitable decision to do right now. 
Um, so that's how that's really helpful in making these in-season production decisions and then controlling for the future decisions and trying to figure out should I replace equipment, should I not replace equipment, how do I lower um, other input costs. So our third question of, of how, do we, how do we address, uh, how do we use this information to make wise marketing decisions? So how do we need to know what we need to sell for? Well, um, this is a pre-recorded video. Uh, but if, you, if we looked at harvest prices today for corn, it's about $3.32 a bushel, and soybeans, it's about $8.84 a bushel. So if you have an understanding of your current cost of production and you uh, have an idea of what you're expecting on your yield, and we can look at this um, it, it, right now, um, uh, the harvest expected harvest price for these commodities and we know our basis on, on what our cash price may be we can start looking at all right, how do I how do I need to market my crop should I go ahead and lock in and sell or um, do I need to look into storage and so what's the storage availability um, maybe something to start thinking about right now uh, and then what's that cost of storage I, I um, would say that one helpful way of figuring out of, of whether you should store or not store, there's a, a really great um, cost of storing grain calculator that, that Iowa State Extension has, has made available. Um, if you're to Google Iowa State cost of storing grain uh, um, calculator, it's a really simple Excel decision aid that can help you look at on-farm storage versus commercial storage. Um, and you can plug in your own numbers and it can give you a good ballpark on okay, what's my cost of storage going to be? Uh, what do I expect the price to go to? Um, and when to sell, when not to sell out, out in the future past harvard, harvest. Um, so that's, that's another thing to, it can help you figure out because, again, that storage cost is going to be adding on to your total cost, which is going to increase your break-even cost. Uh -huh. So in wrapping up, I would just say... Um, you know, I want to say if, when time allows, uh, it's really helpful to, to sit down and figure out what your cost of production is. But I, I would maybe even more strongly say uh, really fight to make time to sit down and pencil out what that co your cost of production is for each commodity. Um, it's really informative information for marketing, um, future investment into machinery, um, sourcing inputs in the future, um, and making decisions right now today in the field. Um, and if, it's, if that's a difficult thing, which it is, it's a difficult thing for, for a lot of people, um, I would encourage you to reach out to UT Extension. Um, the, the, there's a managed program, the, the area farm management specialists are individuals that are um, highly equipped to sit down one-on-one -on -one go through your costs, uh, particularly your fixed costs and your machinery costs, the difficult costs, to, to sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and do an unbiased, completely confidential analysis of your farm um, to help you get a good understanding of your costs so that you can make these other decisions in the future. So thanks for your time. Again, my name is Chris Boyer. Uh, I'm in the Department of Ag and Resource Economics. Any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me you can find my information um, on the website, uh, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the field day.